A long time ago, when the ancient Romans first unearthed Greek marbles, coming across them as unpainted, they naturally proceeded to appreciate them as such. And it gradually became so that ancient Greek sculpture and architecture were thought as the epitome of pristine white marble. Yet, to the justifiable shock of most, recent research has suggested that those sculptures were polychrome, meaning they were brightly painted in varying colors. And yes, that even goes for the Parthenon marbles. Now, you'll rightly think, since we're in a place where we can find that out, we won't fall prey to history like the Romans did. But what we have today that they didn't is just the ability to construct better questions, not necessarily find better answers. Despite recent advances allowing us to date pigments in cave paintings from about 20,000 years ago, and even analyze the techniques used, we're still very much in the dark on what these techniques were really used for. Even when we know more, the variation we get is bewildering. The same things we encounter today, titled in public and minimal spaces, our Renaissance counterparts encountered in their parish church, surrounded by intricate architecture, murals, and the echoes of a choir, or in private settings exhibited next to desperate pictures and odd objects lit by a candle and the moonlight. The question is, is the way our ancestors treated their art meant to be forever inaccessible or foreign to us? There are some philosophers and art historians who think so, but our ancestors' art, at least its objects, is still very much with us. It is what fills our museums and art books, what our art often replies and usually stands next to. It is like we're playing a game of tug of war with these objects pulling us backwards as much as history lets them and our own understanding pulling us forward to the present and the future. I want to pursue the idea that these two forces are not all that opposing after all, but rather point to the fact that we're tugging at a common rope. Our point of view is ours, but is not autonomous from our ancestors. That today in the West, we can understand objects that are not beautiful or that are functional as art is not contradictory to a 16th century Italian being able to understand only objects that are beautiful as art, nor is it a mark of radical discontinuity between us. My aim is to argue that the historical interlude between these two ways of appreciating art is sufficiently intricate as to give the impression of them being two worlds apart, when in fact how we interpret art today significantly harks back to many of the stages of this tug of war ever since the 16th century. As our ancestors appreciated certain objects as art, so do we. And even though they did it for different reasons and in different ways, somehow we keep holding on to the same rope. And I'd like to find out how. Thank you.